What's up everyone, Scad here with episode 6, where in this one we're going to be going through how to get the player to look where the camera is facing, ready for the next two episodes where we're going to be adding in shooting in the next one, and then the one after that we're going to be adding some procedural recoil for the camera and then for the arms as well to make it look nicer. Alright, so before we actually get started on this video, there's a few things I'm going to change quickly. And then the first thing being on the player, where we've got the movement state manager and then the ground master set to the ground. I'm going to set this to default as well, just so every time you drag in a new object you don't have to set to the ground if you want to be able to walk on it. But then there's actually a problem here because the player layer is actually set to default. So we're going to add a new layer here and call this player, which we're actually going to need for later on anyway. And then you just want to select yes, changing children. Alright, so there's two more things I'm going to do. And first of all, for this player prefab, I'm going to right click it, go on the prefab bit and unpack completely. And then I'm just going to change its name, call it like player models. So one other thing we're actually going to have to do is because of the package that we're going to be using to get the player to look where we're aiming, there's going to be an animator put by default on this player, which you can't take off. So I'm just going to remove off this player model, go onto the player, and then just add an animator and set it up quickly. So there's only two things we need to do to set this up. First of all is just add in our player controller. And the second thing is go onto the avatar and then select the player avatar. Alright, with that all set up, there's two more things that I'm going to do, which you don't actually have to because it's still going to work anyway. But first of all, in the aim state manager, where we get the anim, it's going to be equal to get component in children. Like this will still work, but I just prefer for it to be get component if it's not actually in the children. And now with that done, I'm just going to go into the movement state manager and take away the get component in children on this animator as well. Alright, so with that out of the way, we can actually go ahead and start writing the code for this episode. So the first thing we're going to want is a few more variables. And then the first is going to be a serialized field, and this will be a transform. And then this is going to be the aim position, where we want to be looking at. And the next one is going to be another serialized field, which this time is going to be a float. And then this is going to be aim smooth speed. And then finally, I think, another serialized field. This will be a layer mask, and I'm just going to call this aim mask. So we can deselect the player mask so we can't accidentally aim ourselves. Okay, so now in the update, what I'm going to do is make a new vector 2 here and then call this screen center. And then set this equal to a new vector 2, which is going to be the screen dot width, divide this by 2. And then finally, the screen dot height, and then divide this by 2 as well. And then next, we're going to have a ray going from the center of the screen into the world. So it's just going to be ray, ray, and then set this equal to the camera dot main. And then this is dot screen point array. And then in here, we're just going to put the screen center. And then next, we can do our ray cast. So if we just go if physics dot ray cast. So in here, what we're going to do is just put in our ray. And then next, we're going to out a ray cast hit. And then just call this one hit. And next, we want the distance, which is going to be mathf dot infinity. And then finally, the layer mask, which we've called the aim mask. So if this is true, what we're going to be doing is lerping the aim position to the hit position. So we can do this by going aim position dot position, and then set this equal to vector three dot lerp, and then we're going to lerp from the aim position dot position to the hit dot point, and we're going to do this by the smooth speed, and then times this by time dot delta time. So this is nearly ready to test out in Unity. There's a few things we need to do to set up first. First of all, I'm just going to set the aim smooth speed to 20 in the variable, because otherwise I'll forget. And now on the player, you can see what we need is an aim mask here, which I'm just going to select the default, and then select the ground, and then we don't want to select the player, because we really want to avoid looking at ourselves. And then finally, we want to transform for the aim position. So first of all, I'm just going to set a sphere here, so we can actually see if it's working or not. And then I'm going to take off the sphere collider, go back on the player, and drag it in here. Alright, so now when we play, you can see when we're looking around, it's following where we're looking. But there's one problem if we look up. Because there's no collider around the map, it's just getting stuck on the floor and not actually moving. So to fix this, it's really simple. What we're going to do is just add a 3D object and a cube in here. And then I'm going to reset its transform. And then first of all, for this one, I'm going to set the Z position to minus 500. And then go and focus on this by pressing F. And now you can see it's right at the edge of the map. And I'm going to set the Y up to 250. And then the scale of the Y to 500 to get it to reach the ground again. And then finally the scale on X to 1000. And then this way it's going to cover the whole terrain. 
So now if I just fly over this so we can see the rest of the terrain, what we can do is just Control and D to duplicate it. And then here on the position, instead of it being minus 500, we're just going to set it to 500. And then now we can just duplicate this again and put the rotation on the Y to be 90. And then reset the position for the Z. And on this one, we want the X to be 500. And then I'm just going to duplicate this one again. And then this one, we're going to put the X to minus 500 this time. And then finally, we're going to need one for the ceiling. So I'm just going to duplicate this last one. Reset the Y rotation and then set the rotation on the X to 90. And then I'm going to put the position on the X to 0. And then position on the Y to 500. And then finally set the scale on the Y to be 1000. And now we just want to get rid of these mesh renderer components so we can't actually see them. So I'm just going to click the first cube here. And then shift select the last one. Right click on the mesh filter and remove component. And then right click on the mesh renderer as well and remove this component. And then finally just to tidy it up a little bit I'm just going to right click create an empty and then call this walls and then I'm just going to drag all these cubes into the empty game object here and then I can just minimize this alright so now we're actually ready to get the character to look at where we're aiming and what we need for this is to go onto the window and the package manager and we want to get a package called animation rigging alright and to find this you want to make sure that you're in the unity registry and then if you still can't find it you want to go over to the settings go on advanced project settings and enable preview packages because in some of the older versions of Unity, this is still in a beta. So now with this selected, I'm just going to hit install. So now we've got this installed, and you'll be able to tell because up here we've got the animation rigging menu. What we want to do is click the player, go onto the menu, and then first of all click the rig setup. And I'm not going to go into too much detail on this package and explain everything, but there's another video that I'm going to be linking in the description that will explain it a lot better. So the first thing we're going to be doing is getting the body to aim at this ball. And you can see as a child of the player, it's made a game object called Rig1. I'm going to right click on this and create an empty. And then I'm just going to call this one Body Aim. And then we want to add a component to this, which is going to be a multi aim constraint. The first thing we want to add to this is a constrained object, which is going to be our spine bone. So if I open up the player model and then under the Mixmo rig, we've got the spine bone here. I can drag this in. And then finally, what we want is going to be the source objects which is going to be what it's looking at, which for us is going to be the sphere. And then I'm just going to change the name of the sphere to aim position. And now when we hit play. <laughs> All right, so you can see this isn't actually working. But this is really simple to fix. What it's saying is the body aim is on a child transform in the animator hierarchy, which means that all we need to do is drag this rig one onto the player model. So now if we save this and play it. Now when we look down, he's looking at the ground and we look up, he's looking in the sky. And there's one thing, if you don't want him to be bending to looking directly with his body, what we can do on the body aim is change this weight. I'm going to put it to 0.5. And then so now when we look up, he does tilt his body up and down, but not as much as before. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is get his head to aim at this position. So it's exactly the same thing. We're going to right click, create an empty, call this head aim. And then we're going to add a multi-aim constraint. And this time for the constrained object, it's going to be his head. So if we go onto the spine here, keep opening this up, open up the neck, drag the head in there. And one thing I should have mentioned for the spine, but it's already set up for this character. So on the head aim, you can see we've got an aim axis and an up axis. And by default, the aim axis is the Z axis and the up axis is the Y. And if we click on the head, you can see he's aiming with the Z and up is the Y. So that's all right. And then once again, for the source objects, we just want to put in the aim position. And now you can see his body and his head are both looking at this spot. And while we're out of play mode, I'm just going to change this body aim, put the weight to 0.5. And one thing I should mention, it actually matters which way round this goes. So if here we've got the body aim first, then the head aim, which is actually what we want. But if we had the head aim first and then the body aim, so the head would aim and look at the position, but then the body would turn after the head, so then the head wouldn't actually be looking at the position anymore. So we want the body first, then the head, and then we're going to do the hands after. So speaking of the hand, it's time to do the hands. So I'm going to create another empty, call this hand aim. And to be fair, I should probably specify this is the right hand. And then once again, it's going to be a multi-aim constraint. The constrained object is going to be the right hand, which is underneath this right shoulder, right arm, right forearm. And then we've got the right hand here. And then for this one, I know with this character anyway, the aim axis and the up axis we're going to have to change. 
So if you select the right hand, you can see that we want to aim with this Y axis here, and then up axis is going to be the minus Z, because the Z's pointing down, and then we want it up, so it's going to be minus Z. Alright, so now if we go back onto the right hand aim for the rig, we're just going to change the aim axis to the Y, and then up axis to the minus Z. And then finally we're going to add the source object, which is going to be the aim position again. Save that, now when we press play, you won't really be able to see unless we go into the scene view here. So I'm going to fly over and see him, and you can see his hand is pointing at that ball. So with that out of the way, I'm going to add a gun onto this player's hand, and then we're going to be using this package to get the left hand to hold onto the gun. But it's not going to be a multi-aim constraint, it's going to be a different one, which I'll show you in a sec. So what I've done is just imported some gun models which are downloaded online, which I'll leave a link to in the description. And now this gun's ready, I'm just going to drag it and put it straight onto the right hand here. But I'm just going to right click on it, go on prefab and unpack completely. And now we need to position it right, and I'm always bad at thinking about which way it's going to go. I think we need to change the Y rotation to no, no. The X rotation to nine no. Okay, the Z rotation to 90. No, minus 90. Yes. Maybe. We'll find out. So, I feel like this is going to be wrong, but I'm going to play it, and we're going to find out. I think it'll be upside down. Okay, it is upside down. So, 90? No. No. Okay, 180 on the X. 90 on the Z. There we go. And then I'm just going to move this around a little bit. So he's got his finger on the trigger. Alright, so when you're happy with it, remember to right click on the transform, copy component, so when we unpress play, we can right click on the transform and paste component values. So now this is done, we can set up the IK for the left hand, so he's always grabbing the gun. So to do this, we go on the rig again, right click, create an empty, and then I'm just going to call this left hand IK. We're going to add a component, and this is going to be two bone IK constraint. And then so what we can do here is just first of all, we want to find the left hand. So if we go open the left shoulder, left arm, get to the left hand, we want to drag this one into the tip. And then what you can do is just drag in the forearm and stuff. But if we right click on the script here, and then we can go auto set up from tip transform. So now you can see in the rig, we've got two more objects here. And the first is the target and the second one's the hint. So what we're going to do is just select both of these and first of all just put them onto the right hand. And then I'm just going to reset the transform for all these and we're going to set it up in play mode. Alright, so now in the scene view, what I'm going to do here is first of all just go onto the left hand hint and then just drag this out. And now on the left hand target, what we can do is just rotate this so his hand's the right way and then we can move it forward a bit. And unfortunately in this episode, I won't be covering this, I'll be doing this in the recall one, but his arm can't reach long enough to go underneath the barrel, which isn't really a problem when you're playing the game because you're behind him and you can't actually really see the gun too much. But like I said, I'll be fixing this in the recall video, which is going to be the one after the next one. So in the next one we're going to be adding in shooting. But then what I'm going to do is just go onto the transform of the target, just twist this a little bit more, bring it back. And then I'm going to right click, copy the component, uncheck play, paste in the component values. Alright, so now I'm going to do the same for the hint. I'm just going to grab this and drag it over here a bit. And you can see when we hit firing, it doesn't really make much difference. But if we go back in the game, and I'll play this and pause it. You can see that his elbow is sticking out more here. So I'm just going to right click on this transform, copy the components, uncheck play, paste the components again. So as you can see, this is already looking a lot better with the character aiming where we're actually looking. And in the next video, we're going to be adding in shooting. And then the one after that, we're going to be adding in some recoil. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.